Hello, how are you this week of October, whatever, the 11th, getting closer to that <clears throat> interesting date of Halloween. We'll get into that, though, for sure. Uh, let me just jump right into the stuff that I've been seeing on social media. Still not back on Twitter. Still need someone's phone number or a phone number to get back on Twitter. Um, but I have found ways to get interesting articles for you guys outside of Twitter anyway. I think it's the information that uh, is shared on this platform is, I think, just as fast as Twitter. So eh, it's, it's a good uh, replacement, I'd say, of Twitter with even less malarkey possibly. But uh, warning for anyone watching uh, and maybe even anyone listening, this is incredibly disturbing. It's really hard for me to watch again, especially me, be, you know, me being a soon-to-be mother. Um, this is something I saw on Instagram originally. Horrific video shows daycare workers terrifying sobbing toddlers with Halloween mask. There's a thumbnail of the happy event, and I'm being sarcastic. This is like, I'm really nervous playing this because I just don't want to watch it, but um, let me actually yeah, click it here. All right, that's about as much as I'm going to play from that because it's uh, really disturbing and I would let it just run in the background here, but it's going to be so distracting. I don't know where this was posted originally. doesn't really matter. Uh, it was a daycare worker in Mississippi uses a screen mask to scare children. And I think this is a really actually on, on point topic to bring up about Halloween and how much Halloween legitimately desensitizes let me just show desensitizes people into giggling at gory stuff or laughing at someone providing a jump scare to a child. I remember growing up in my neighborhood for trick or treating. Kind of, I've also had topic um, discussions with my neighbors and fellow Christian mothers of like, did you celebrate Halloween in your house? And how, how did you do that? Um, whether or not you did or did not. Some of them said, you know, no, not at all. Actually only one person. Um, and I was like, how do you even deal with that when they're older and kind of are aware of what's going on and they're, you know, quote, not having fun like the other kids in class or something. How do you combat that? You know, and other people I've talked to mothers say that, they actually do let them participate. Um, they just don't let them wear gory costumes. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit. I don't have any answer to even what I believe what I'm going to do with my kid right now. Um, it's it's just one of those things you have to figure out once the time comes, I guess, when you're an adult. I don't know. You know, it's it's interesting because it's a pagan holiday. And I, I should have done my research on the on the roots of Halloween. Um it doesn't require much research to actually find the history of it. Oh God, cats, male cat harasses female cat. Go figure. Anyway, cats and their shenanigans. Uh, yeah. So, Oh, the, the uh, trick or treating in my neighborhood growing up, there was this porch that there'd be a guy sitting on it. It's one of those things where you don't know if it's a human or a stuffed scarecrow or something. And, you know, they would jump out last minute and scare trick-or-treaters. And it's one of those things that is really bizarre where it's up to the parent to decide whether or not something is like crossing a line. You know, it's like, is this person even going to get in trouble? Because they'll probably just be like, it's just a joke, bro. What? Um, I don't know. You know, I just feel these people, who knows what the hell they were thinking. It's incredibly 
traumatizing for me to watch. Like these kids are in serious, if you're not watching or you haven't seen this video, serious turmoil, um, unbelievably terrified, not laughing. It kills me. This lady, I guess one of the daycare workers with the mask on, like uh, brushes a little boy's head. Maybe it's a girl. It doesn't matter. Brushes the kid's head all gentle and then does another jump scare. I'm just like, what are these people on besides demonic juice? It's so disturbing. Um, yeah, I just don't think it's just think about it. You know, if you strip away all the cutesy Disneyified stuff about Halloween, uh, you know, the cute, catchy, oogie boogie. Listen, Nightmare Before Christmas is incredibly entertaining. I used to love it. Um, the music is great. Blah, blah, blah. I used to love Denny Elfman and um, Tim Burton. Uh, I mean, I grew up on Edward Scissorhands. I freaking loved that film, um, which is funny. I always bring this up, but, you know, in that movie, the Christian woman is painted all demonically. It's the most twisted thing ever. And I always thought it was a demon lady watching that movie growing up. And then as an adult, I'm like, that's a Christian in that movie, which is so like Satan literally distorts the truth like that. So it's even their tactics of painting that Christian lady like that is very uh, at its essence and core satanic because Satan works in that way. He's very deceptive and sneaky. So, um, you know, if you strip away all the Disney stuff about Halloween, it ain't good. Um you know, you're literally desensitizing your child, parading them along in a neighborhood or wherever, whatever, what have you. And, you know, a lot of the lawn ornaments are like creepy ass skeletons with like rah, mouths agape, uh, hanging bloody clowns from a tree. These are uh, decorations I've literally seen, obviously. I actually saw a black unicorn blow up, you know, a lot of these blow up um yard decorations it was a black unicorn and i'm like how messed up is that like it's so <laughs> yeah you're it's distorting like something beautiful and pure which is i mean it's a mythical not a real thing anyway hey just will it break it to you but it's just demented i can the only way i can put it you know you're 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 taking your kid to these houses to you know strangers god knows what they're handing out I know I sound very mommy and like, wow, lighten up, but I'm telling you like the, the contrast of me being here last year and then to now is so entirely different. Like I don't even see Halloween the same anymore. The veil has truly been lifted from my eyes about the truth of the world. Um, you know, last year we decorated for Halloween, handed out candy. I may still hand out candy. I don't know, but I would definitely attach like Bible verses to the candy or something. Um, yeah, last year I saw a toddler wearing a Squid Game costume. And I'm like, now I haven't watched the show, but I know what it's about. The whole show is about everyone having to kill each other in order to have like the winner kind of like, um, is that like Hunger Games? Yeah, like Hunger Games and uh, Battle Royale, which is like the original, I feel like one of the originals of that concept. Um, I remember watching it in high school and being like, whoa, cool. I don't know what the deal is with like, I guess, I don't know, Satan makes like gory movies and really messed up movies appealing to people. I can't figure out why I was so obsessed with so many messed up movies and movie concepts. I used to say that it's because I like to, I like to feel all emotions, whether bad or good. Maybe, you know, I literally don't know what it is. I'm very fascinated by it though. I want to know why. Why I was obsessed with like Clockwork Orange, you know, Alex, I think DeLarge, that's his name. I read the book and then saw the movie. Um, is literally a like serial rapist who like beats an old person to death. They're like, you know, just disgusting, you know, orgies. Like, it's, it's Stanley Kubrick is entirely in it, a league of his own of being messed up. But I'm like, why in the world? I think it's because I didn't have a father figure as messed up as this is. And Alex was a uh, dominating male figure. I don't know. I honestly, I thought this over and I still can't figure it out. But yeah, you know, this this whole like Halloween being cutesy and I don't I don't agree with it. You know, I even worked at one of the most famous uh, Halloween or uh, haunted houses in Atlanta, Georgia called uh, Netherworld. It was actually a blast. Um, and every night you'd have a different gig different character and I was a doll girl one evening and I had to sit in a chair 
and do jump scares to people. Um, I wasn't that great at it because it's just, I don't know. I don't, whatever. The, the other one was I was like in a jail cell and it was all dark <laughs> and it had strobe light. And there's another guy in another cell and we were like super bored between um, customers. But we had the, the trick is that we would have Hershey syrup in a cup and we would put some in our mouth and wait for people to come through and then be like, and have it like drip on my, you know, chin and all over me. <laughs> Cause in the dark, it looks like blood. You, you don't know that it's chocolate syrup. Although what's hilarious is that there was someone that came in they were like, why does it smell like chocolate syrup? And it was the funniest thing ever because I mean, you're not gonna be able to hide that smell. Plus I can never have chocolate syrup like ever again, because it was just repeated, like having to like it just funny and then the other gig i had was i was like a puppet thing it was the most boring gig ever you're wearing all black there's this like hanging puppet that you have wooden sticks that you control the arms with that you kind of push forward the person's like walking forward towards the puppet and then they turn right and they warned me they were like don't keep the puppet close to your face because people will definitely punch the puppet um, and, and retaliate, which will come back on you. And of course, what happened? I got smacked in the face because I just wasn't paying attention to how close my face was. I freaking hurt. <laughs> uh, it was a really fun, creative outlet for me. And I think maybe that's why it's appealing to a lot of younger people is that a lot of evil stuff uh, can be portrayed as creative, like artistic. How much art out there gets passed and, and it's like totally pedophilic or uh you know just like absolutely inappropriate i think a lot look up marina maria abramovich's work and you'll know what i'm talking about here but you know back to that video i just i think the people got fired but it doesn't matter because those kids are gonna be are obviously damaged for life like in ways that i'm not even entirely sure um you know someone being fired over something like that is not enough of a like it's it's like if it's like if someone dies, it's like, oh, you get money or the person the person that killed that person gets locked away for life. It doesn't matter because it doesn't change the fact that somebody died. I mean, you know, this person being fired does not change the fact that they tormented these kids in this way. And apparently, from what I've read, the person who was filming, a lot of people are like, why was this being filmed? Uh, the person, it was like some Facebook post where they're like, this happened before and I didn't have video proof, so I couldn't... Um, you know, file a police report or something. And they claimed that they were recording for evidence. And they're like, don't judge me. You know, if I could have done it differently, blah, blah, blah. I know who I am at the end of the day. I don't know. Who knows what the truth is, honestly. Um, beyond, beyond disturbing on uh, so many levels. And again, it's just a, you have to wonder, This was this person so desensitized to something that's horrifying that they, they think that this is funny and especially when like, you know, kids screaming or um, someone that's in pain, if you put like cheery music in the background of that, you're being desensitized to the horrors of what is actually going on. I'm going to skip forward all these articles I have pulled up and show you um, an, a, uh, we're going to talk about liquid death, which is a, I don't even know if it's sparkling water. It doesn't matter. It's a, a canned water drink called liquid death. Um I have to go back on my Instagram, but on my Instagram, I took a photo of the back of the can and um, I'm just like, you know, <laughs> they paint these things as like fun and we're just kidding. It's just a joke. bro. Although I've never heard them say they're just kidding. That's the funny thing as well. Um, it, you know, it's got a horrible looking skull on it. It's called liquid death. Oh man. It might've been in my story. Crap. It's not on my Instagram. It's on a story. Oh, well, I can just uh, Google it. But um, I'm, I'm going to play this, some of this commercial that's made by Liquid Death for you. Ah, the underworld, where the souls of the damned are sentenced to an eternity of unrelenting torment. Some call it hell. I call it home. And single-use plastic bottles are making a real mess of it. The billions of plastic bottles polluting the Earth are now overflowing down here into the underworld, where they're just ruining our delicate ecosystem. An island of plastic trash now floats in our demon ocean, 
choking our three-headed demon fish and our demon turtles. It's polluting our 2,000-year-old torture pits, ruining the fun for everyone. And they're making a mess of my front porch. Where are my darn keys? And you may be thinking, it's fine. Plastic bottles are recyclable. Relax. <laughs> but that simply isn't true. Most recycling plants send plastics to landfills because it's not profitable to recycle anymore. I just turned their brains into snakes. <laughs> All right, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, of like, so if you take away the music and the corny uh, script, this woman is torturing people in hell. Um, again, it's just that creepy thing of like, you're watching something really demented and pretty messed up, but if you put cheery, funny music over it and <laughs> laughter, on top of that as well, it's all of a sudden funny. That is right in line with the, uh, uh, what is that new cartoon? Um, I'm, I've, I'm sure you've seen it or maybe not. I'm going to look it up. Satan's Daughter Cartoon. Uh, Little Demon. How could I not have remembered that name? Let's, I'm going to show you that one as well. It's a perfect example of desensitizing someone to um, total satanic everything. <laughs> uh, I saw this trailer, I believe, when we were watching, going to watch uh, Top Gun in theaters, and I just could not believe what the hell, what the heck I was seeing. It is demented, uh, satanic. Girl, those shoes should come with a content warning. What a waste. Ah! New girl, say hi to the world. <sighs> the sky over a local junior high has torn open. Mom? Get in! The summer putting this off. Your dad is the devil and you're the antichrist. I'm supposed to accept that you had sex with Satan or anyone? Ah! Please allow me to introduce my... Uh, one eye symbolism on her uh, hair barrette, by the way, but. Come to your father, Damien. Oh, you're a girl. The future is female. Great to meet you. Where have you been my whole life? The metaphysical realm. It's not hell, but it's got the essentials. Hey, everybody. This is my daughter. Kiss her ass or I'll slaughter your children. Proud of you. When we dated, were you inside someone's corpse? You had an unfinished dolphin tattoo. Don't be a snob. Oh. She says, I lied to protect you. She sounds like a bitch. That's what I said. Hey, look at me. I'm bad grandma. A little, little man. What do you make of this thing? Biblical or the media? I like things the way they were. You know, put some fun music in the background, uh, make a cartoon. Aubrey Plaza is one of the most effed up actresses in Hollywood. She always takes really demonic roles and plays them really well. And in, 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 in interviews, she's jokes about demonic stuff all the time. Oh, there's some symbolism. Oh, let's go back. There's some symbolism in, right here in the background. It is the symbolism for the Church of Satan. Look at how subtle this is. Look at how subtle this pentagram is. You can see a little bit of the goat head right here, I believe. But um, like I, that's exactly what Satan does. You know, it's very sneaky and not quite in your face. You know, bam, pentagram. It's, you know, the animation that goes by that animates the little demon here is much more in your face. And kind of the focal point in the background is... Again, subtle, but it's right in front of your face. And Church of Satan. Uh, oops, going to images. There it is, right there. Right there, y'all. Let me put it next to it so we can go back and forth. Yeah, you see that? It is literally, especially this symbol right here, this one on the bottom left. You can see it very clearly right here. Um, you know, I don't take this shit lightly. When something as real as this Church of Satan, which is very real, has a logo like this, which is is their logo, and they're putting that logo <laughs> in the background of this new cartoon, 
if someone shows you their true colors or if someone just believe them, if they tell you something, if they show you something, um, you know, people joke about like when they're about to date or when they're dating someone, they're like, the woman will be like, I'm crazy. I'm a crazy bitch. Or like, I'm insane. People have said I'm, I'm insane. And <laughs> just take them for the word. Like I've, I've encountered people like that where they're, they say that and they wind up being actually that like, they're not lying. They're literally telling you what they are. Let me uh, extra, let me start exiting out of these tabs. We got too many of these going on here. Now I'm all over the place, which is fine. Spoiler alerts everywhere. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, well, I guess I'll just continue with the uh, uh, that water. Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, this is an article from 2019. It says liquid death. The canned water was cursed by a witch for Halloween. Quench your thirst, but not your soul. Just in time for Halloween, canned water brand Liquid Death hired a practicing witch to cast a hex on its October stock. Consumers of certified cursed Liquid Death will become magnets for demons. Don't believe us? That's cool. See for yourself. And unfortunately, the video is private um, because probably they were there was so much outrage about it. Um, so continuing an article. This is an article from, by the way, Muse Cleo. I don't know. The guy up there in this video that's unavailable is a mystic is Mystic Dylan, a practicing witch who offers custom spell work for $150 a pop. Um, which let me click into this new tab. I think uh, this is his website, which is just gloriousness of full full on occultic everything. Everything about this guy is occultic and uh, witchcraft. Let's see testimonials. Candle interpretation products. Anyway, uh, I was going to show the video of this guy. This guy right here. I think he's some like queer witch guy. Hi all. This is Mystic Dylan, and my first official video is going to be about coming out of the broom closet. So you can practice. Anyway, I just showed a clip of the guy homosexual with the onk necklace on which i can't remember what it means it's some egyptian symbol that probably means like living forever god knows the egyptian the egyptians worshipped you know animal gods and whatnot and everything occultic uh in that realm he's got a cauldron um it looks like an angelic crown above his head here like i don't know what that is actually some sun like you know witchy occult looking hippie blanket behind him uh books i can't quite read them says potions and poisons i think i don't know what that is you know poor guy he actually needs jesus more than anything back to the article before we dig into the ad here's a primer on liquid death launched last year this is again an article from 2019 so i guess it's 2018 launched last year by former netflix creative director mike cesario in may it raised 1.6 million to take water in a tall boy can to the straight edge punk crowd the appeal for this is broader than one might believe. The funding round was led by Science Inc., which, what the hell is that? With tech contributors that included Dollar Shave Club founder Michael D Dubbin, which is, this is fascinating. I didn't know all this history until recently. Twitter co-founder Biz Stone and Away co-founder Jen Rubio. Let's return to that Halloween curse. This ad is long and melodramatic, more a play on stereotypes than anything serious. Yeah, I see how they undermine... Um, Anything that's real or legit. It's just, uh, this sounds like they're saying it's just a joke, bro. Even if for pagans and practicing witches, I can feel tried and potentially dangerous. Historically, stereotypes kill minorities now as then and not a, not just witches. What? <sighs> um, given Mystic Dylan's profession, that's the guy's name, by the way, or his fake name, obviously, and its reliance on his legitimacy, it's also a rather flagrant way to invite harm on customers themselves. Though in the end, maybe it's see, it's interesting how they have this moment of clarity here, and then they go, well, you know, maybe not. Though in the end, maybe it's not much more serious than locking yourself in a bathroom, lights off, and whispering Bloody Mary three times in the mirror, trembling with belief and anticipation. Belief is everything, right? Uh, whatever. This is uh, blah 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 blah. Liquid death is all about toying with the superficiality of that construction. Uh, I don't know what it says in parentheses here. Though, should demons actually come for you? They're selling an antidote online for 99 cents. And I have not had time to look that up. And it maybe at that point, they actually were jokingly selling an antidote for 99 cents of being demon possessed. And I'm just like, what the literal F 
When Cesario launched Liquid Death as a side project, it was to explore exciting ways to rebrand water as a substance that was totally opposite of the current yoga accessory stigma. Well, what? While also having a truthful insight that isn't complete bullshit. And since we are competing with the most explosive, rebellious brands in the market, our health, healthy water, excuse me, he said healthy ones, I don't know why I said our healthy water brand had to be even more punk and fuck you than energy drinks. That's a direct quote from uh, what he told Ad Week in 2018. It's hard to overstate how much he actually means the truthful insight part on top of everything else. Under a section labeled hashtag death the plastic, Liquid Death's website reveals the brand donates five cents of every, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, blah, 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 sustainable stuff. This is the creepiest shit ever. Like, I don't take, when it's, when, when someone's talking about selling their soul, I do not take that as a joke. I take it very literal. And this guy, Joe Man, 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 Jan, Jan, I don't know how you say his last name. He's an actor. I have no idea what he was in. Um, he's like, I'm not sure what ethnicity he is. Maybe Italian. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's a video. Let, let's play it. I haven't actually watched it because I figured I'd save it for you guys. Get a reaction from he, me here live. Hey there. One of the easiest and free things you can do to help on my podcast is to leave a Apple podcast review for this podcast. It is free, pretty effortless. It takes, I don't know, less than a minute out of your day. If you don't want to do that, you can support my podcast by heading to paypal.me forward slash LP foster kittens or become a monthly subscriber to my subscribe star, which is subscribestar.com forward slash distorted lens. As always, thank you so much for listening and follow Following me on Odyssey or YouTube, subscribing, hitting the bell, because I've been told that hitting the bell helps out a lot with getting notified that I'm even posting new content. So God bless y'all and let's keep trucking on y'all. Okay, that is factually horrifying. Again, like that is an actual ritual he's partaking in. This is not a joke. He's wearing a hat that says death saves, which I think is a total mockery on Jesus saves. Um, and I love how they, metal music has always done this where it's like metal is cool. I think people, a lot of people that enjoy metal music and goth culture are people that want to put on a, a shield um, a very visual shield when they go out into the public or even online nowadays with social media that says, I'm a hard ass. I'm, I'm raw. I'm, I'm metal. You can't come near me. You can't F with me. Um, because they're really sensitive and fragile on the inside. And I'm speaking this because this is, this was me in my past. Um, this is really interesting. So, you know, the whole E3 BS thing of my past the gamer, I'm an ex gamer girl, literally. Um, so E3 is one of the biggest big gaming conventions in the world. And um, when you're a gamer, that you create a certain persona, had a certain handle, a certain username. Uh, I was dyeing my hair pink at the time because it was I was trying to make it a staple, but I liked changing my hair up too much to make it actually a staple, so people can recognize you by that hair color, I suppose. Um, it, yeah, uh, you basically just create someone that's not you really, which is actually really depressing because why would you not want to be yourself? Um, how, how unauthentic and how unreal is you create, is someone creating a persona to look cooler anyway? So going to E3, uh, you know, I had my hair pink and I had this certain persona that I wanted to emit while I was there because we're being filmed like left and right. We, I was on stage for the whole, uh, I forgot what it's called opening show conference, which is a, a huge deal. And everyone tunes in to watch it and being on stage is like unreal. Like, you know, I'm an ex uh, competitive cheerleader. 
So that's like next level performance for the gamer world, even though it's for just dance. And a lot of people look down on just dance as being a douchey game, even though it's an incredible game to, well, I used to think it's an incredible game. Now I realize that it just led me, literally led me into a, the satanic realm. And I mean that very literally, like the musicians that are in that game have literally sold their souls in the music industry. And this is a whole nother tangent, but I, I really do believe that in the music industry that there are certain, it's going to sound tinfoil and hatty, but if you, again, have the veil lifted from your eyes about the world and how evilness is real, or, you know, evil is real, then you'll wake up to a lot of stuff. Um, I, I believe that music can have certain frequencies to literally put you in a trance or, I don't know, change you. And I just look back at my, what that game turned me into. And it was like the most degenerate, lying horrible person I've ever been in my entire life. Like, I'm not going to say that it was a game entirely that did that, but you know, the timing of it was awfully convenient, I suppose. Um, so yeah, my whole persona I wanted to do was like metal. Like eh, I always did the devil horns and I had my tongue out in photos, even in the clip of me on stage, the camera pans by us. And I was like, I just, just, just stupid, like Miley Cyrus crap. I don't even know, honestly, because I didn't want to be looked at I don't know. I've never wanted to be looked at as a like feminine, girly type person. I, this guy scowl is like staring at me. But um, so I've I, I've always typically been the like tomboy. I can't even eat a meal without getting shit on my shirt. I, you know, I'm not very prim and proper. It's not my thing. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. That I think it was a form of protection to be like I'm a badass. <sighs> I just, you know, maybe I think that girly girls get uh, preyed upon more. Um, anyway, so where was I going with that? Oh, this whole, he, you know, you're not, if you're not watching this, he just has this whole presence. First of all, he signs his name for this selling your soul with this, um, uh, what is it called again? I just forgot the name of the, oh, liquid death um, in his own blood. He pricks his finger, squeezes it out into a little container and signs it with a uh, calligraphy or whatever kind of pen you call that. Um, and then slams a the liquid death and is like, Bleh! and then the horrible metal music. Oh, I dated a guy who was really into the metal scene in South Georgia. It was horrific. I can't stand that music. It's total, total, total crap. Ay, ay, ay. So I don't think this is funny at all. And I think it's very legit. Um, I don't think that that's what, you know, him him acting this out and doing this is not, I don't think this is, you can't pass it off as, Oh, it's just a joke. Even if your, um, your mentality behind it was, Oh, I'm not taking this seriously. It's not going to affect me. I don't believe that for one bit. Like if you use a Ouija board and you're like, well, I'm not, I don't really believe this stuff. You're still opening a door. Do you think Satan or his demons give a crap if you're not in it? In, into it uh, fully. Do you think they're going to wait on you to be ready? I don't think so. That, that Actually, I, I know so. It's not how that works. Um, I take this very seriously, and I don't know the repercussions of this um, or how you come out of that, honestly. Gross. And um, so this is the website, liquiddeath.com. Let me make this bigger here. Um, and it says, the Liquid Death Country Club, sell your soul to join contract binding for all eternity. And like, again, like I don't see anywhere on this website where it says it's just a joke, bro. We're kidding. Calm down. Um, selling your soul to join the club gets you one free country club ex exclusive tea. When you spend $50 in liquid death, exclusive asset access to club only merchandise, early access to limited edition merchandise for you now. Well, just stupid. All kinds of really cool shit. We can't tell you about yet. By selecting sell my soul, I agree to receive important info and offers from liquid death since they will own my soul for eternity. Like again, it, nowhere does it say we're just kidding. Like this is not a fucking joke. Pardon my French summon us the company. I just, I don't, I don't take these again. When someone tells you what they are or who they are, um, you believe them. Like, why would I not believe this person or this company? Excuse me. I'm going to look up the side of the can liquid death can. So I want to find, I wish I had my phone on me right now. Um, I want to see what it says on the side. Oh, here we go. I think. I don't know if this is the one that I saw, though. 
this frosty can of pristine Austri Austrian mountain water won't just refresh your body. It will murder your thirst. Can't read it. Hold on. Give me a second. Oops. Uh, our proprietary thirst murdering process. I can't read it. It's font is really hard to read. Uh, blah, blah, blah. With liquid death. Oh, crap. I wish I can't read it. It's like what? It's like a shimmery silver font over white. So it's really hard to read. Oh, here we go. Oh, these are way easier to read. Give me a second. I got to make it bigger. Uh, our proprietary thirst murdering process begins with liquid death forming a rope of veins that will wrap around your thirst's head and strangle it. Once liquid death reaches your thirst's brain, all of your thirst's memories will be replaced with the repeating loop of its own head imploding, which is exactly what happens next by it causing your thirst's head to implode and its brains to squirt out of its ears. Once your thirst has been murdered, the soul of your thirst will begin to escape and float towards the ceiling. At this point, drink a second sip of liquid death to rip its soul back down and force it to begin to gluing its own body parts together so that it can be crawl so it can crawl back inside you and eventually grow into a fully formed thirst once again. What? Demented. Oh, let me show you one more bullshit uh video from that company. Actually, I have more than one. Uh, unfortunately here, uh, it's happened in my history. Thought I did. Give me a second here. Yeah. Whoops. Uh, I can't find it. Damn it. Oh, well, anyway. One more liquid death thing. Let me exit out of that. This is Martha Stewart promoting liquid death. I'm gonna have to reload the page because I don't know how you I don't know how you reload these uh, things. Hi, I'm Martha Stewart. I recently heard about an interesting new beverage company called Liquid Death. Don't worry, it's just water. And together, we've teamed up to create an utterly delightful candle. But a lot of people are asking me how he made them so realistic. Well, it's not easy. Each one is made by hand. I've got to admit, I've probably enjoyed making these a little too much. Nothing's more realistic than my limited edition dismembered moments luxury. Okay, again, again, again. It's the desensitization of someone being chopped up, having their hand chopped off, um, and then having the, the, you know, like infomercial, gentle music, Martha Stewart's all... Uh, gentle and you know quaint and not seen as a murderous person she's literally chopping up like someone's body and they press this trap door thing and the guy falls through it they blurt out it's like blood everywhere again it's just this i mean look at this it's in front of your face um absolute total gore and people are in the comments like um so beautiful you look wonderful couldn't love her anymore whoever came up with this is genius Funny, creative, but very weird. I mean, see, see how creative and artistic come across as, uh, you know, satanic, demonic. This was hilarious. Good marketing. Martha, do it big for Halloween. At least some people have their senses and say, what the hell did I just watch? Um, disturbing, not funny. I totally agree. Um, yeah, she's hilarious. Love it. Hysterical. Love it. I mean, I don't understand. How are people laughing at this? That is so messed up. Imagine this happens in front of your face in real life. What's your reaction going to be? You're, do you not think that this kind of grooming your mind to accept total evil is going to affect you? Like, of course it is. The can I don't even know this candle is real. It probably is. God knows it's probably like $200. It is literally a dismembered hand holding a liquid death can. It's so like unbelievably corny and just lame. It's called Dismembered Moments Luxury Candle. I shit you not. It's all black. It looks unbelievably satanic. 
and just I have no words to be honest. And I know whatever it's just uh, Martha Stewart, another celebrity who's obviously sold their soul in so many ways because if you're doing this kind of an ad and you have no problem with it, I don't know, you know, it's just wild to me. <sighs> Let's go on. Um, I don't know. If, uh, okay. So apparently PayPal in their like user or their um, misinformation policy. I got to Let me scroll down this web or the, uh, the article. So the uh, they came up with this new acceptable use policy, expanded the company's list of prohibited activities on its platform to include the sending, posting, or publication of any messages, content, or materials that provide pr uh, promote informa misinformation. Users that violated the policy would have been subject to a two thousand five hundred dollar fine that PayPal would automatically debit from their account. The policy was originally slated to go into effect on November third, but the updated policy created a firestorm on social media over the weekend. With several PayPal employees weighing in and criticizing the policy, including PayPal, who cares about Elon Musk, whatever. I think he's the Antichrist, not gonna lie. <laughs> Elon Musk is like winning over the masses by posting effing memes. Like, I'm I'm funny, guys. Look at me, and I'm not buying it. He wants to chip you and just turn you into transhuman Uh PayPal immediately rolled back its policy update to exclude the new inf inf ugh, misinformation policy. The company told media outlets, PayPal is not finding people for misinformation. The language was never intended to be inserted into our policy, which I, I call total BS on. They received a shitload of flack and a lot of people canceling their accounts. And they 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 backtracked 100. Like, there's no way that you write up an agreement like this and then say, "Oops, we didn't. Someone didn't mean that. That was an accident." Like, how you? There's no way it's an accident. Like this this went over so many people's eyeballs and it still went out. Total malarkey. And you, now you know what PayPal has up their sleeves for you. So uh, unfortunately, I just used PayPal today. I really need to cancel it. But on the topic of canceling. Um, yeah, hold on. This is the same article about saying, oh, we didn't mean to. Um, hold on, where'd it go? Not that. PayPal? Oh, I, I must have exited it out. Not that. Um, let me, gotta go to Instagram. Crap. Well, basically, uh, they're doing this thing where um, you're not able to actually cancel your account for, let me pull up on this browser. You can't, they'll, they're stopping you from canceling your account or pulling out of, uh, Instagram for, I'm sorry, a uh, PayPal for a month. Let me pull it up on another browser. So I'm not gonna be able to see it just because I didn't have it pulled up or maybe I can actually, I'll do it. Just give me, just bear with me for like a couple of seconds, y'all. All right. It's a screenshot. Uh, it says, we're working on your request. Thanks for letting us know you want to delete your PayPal account data. We've already confirmed your identity. Now we'll look at your account history and email you usually within 30 days to let you know the status. Certain factors such as, such as federal, state, and local laws can affect what data we can delete. You have rights and choices about how your personal data is collected, stored, used, and shared. You can find it more in our privacy statement. If you don't want to click on the link, please select privacy at the bottom of the paypal.com page. This looks like it's an email or maybe it's an in-app um, pop up that when you go to delete your account, it says this, and there's a lot of people confirming this, um, you know, hilarious. They're just preventing people from closing their accounts with, uh, the 30 day BS thing, hashtag bankrupt PayPal. So let's go back to Halloween stuff or, eh, let's, eh, okay, let's cover this. <laughs> I'm like all over the place. This is from American military news.com. Uh, Biden admin, uh, trans, I hate using this language. I don't like using it, but I'm reading the article here. Trans women must register for draft. Trans men don't have to. Uh, under President Joe Biden's administration, transgender women who are born male, which I'm um, never mind, must register for the selective service, which provides a defense department with troops in the event of the military draft. Transgender men who are women who are born female do not have to register for the selective service. It's just so hilarious because it's like, hello, yeah, biology, real biology and uh, sex is, you know, dimorphic. And yeah, while the policy was established before Biden took office, the administration has not changed the standard. According to the selective service system website, nearly all male U.S. citizens and male immigrants who are 18 through 25 are required to register with selective service. 
This website states that all biological males must register for the draft, including U.S. citizens or immigrants who are born. Okay, you get it. Um, which is absolutely hilarious. And for some reason, when I pulled up this article or the uh, phrase, it was only conservative websites that are covering this. So um, I would like to... Um, this is a tweet, and it's from the Selective Service from October 7, 2022. Parents, if your son is an only son and the last male in your family to carry the family name, he is still required to register with SSS. Learn more about who needs to register at sss.gov. Um, let's see. Disabled men. There we go. Transgender people. This is from the actual website. U.S. citizens or immigrants who are born male and changed their gender to female are still required to register. It's so funny that uh, left-wing webs... I can't believe there hasn't been an uproar with uh, the trans cult about this because I'd love to see how they would uh, have a field day over this one or just whine about it. Oh, well, actually, because doesn't this... <laughs> it invalidates their... Their femaleness, their girlhood. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. Individuals who are born female and change their gender to male are not required to register. What? Oh, this is total clown world. I'm actually freaking loving this. Um, yeah. OPM notes that transgender refers to people whose gender identity and or expression is different from the sex assigned to them at birth, blah, blah, blah. Um, hilarious, you know, just just uh good stuff good stuff so here's some more halloween stuff um oh i had that pulled up it's fine um i could pull it up but uh do i want to um hocus pocus is coming out with hocus pocus 2 and first of all if you haven't seen the movie i saw it like three years ago because i was like all right i know it's a cult classic i gotta see it um, it was okay, but now I think back on it and just look at it and I'm like, it's disgusting. Like this is on Etsy and it has all these shirts that say, I smell children. And it's got the three sisters. Um, Winnie, I smell a child. Like all these, you know, just like eh, quotes and art from the movie on Etsy. Here's some quotes from the movie. Um, let's see. Never seen the movie before. Don't worry. Here's a scoop. Hocus Pocus is a film about three witches summoned from the dead by a couple of kids in Salem, Massachusetts on Halloween. Their goal to steal the lives of Salem's children before the sun comes up so they can live forever. So, you know, harvesting kids souls so they can live forever. It sounds a lot like adrenochrome, but anyway. Um, so here's some quotes from the movie. I smell children. I, uh, okay, no, let's see. You know, I've always wanted a child, and now that I think I'll have one, on toast. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I'll eat a child on toast. Nom, 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 nom. Hello? Like, desensitizing you to cannibalism of children here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Most of them are whatever. Come, little children. I'll take thee away. Like, oh, was Hocus Pocus a Disney movie? Um, anyway, let's see. Is it? I think it is. Hocus Pocus Disney. Uh, yeah, it was released by Disney. So, wow, big shocker there. No way. No way. By the way, that website is reading the article or the uh, quotes from us from Reader's Digest. Do y'all remember those magazines? <laughs> Oh, my mom used to get them. They were like tiny little booklet magazines that I actually don't even remember what the hell they were. There was like recipes in them and maybe jokes. I don't remember what else it had in them though. Like random stories about small town people. I don't even know. Can't quite recall. TikTok bans the term white lives matter. TikTok has banned users from even searching the term white lives matter. Listen to phrases being associated with hateful behavior. Why? So I'm sorry. It's very clear. Again, if someone tells you, it's, if someone reveals something about themselves or they're like, I am this way, believe them. Um, they're saying that white people are hateful. Like we have hateful behavior and, uh, you know, injected in our veins from birth or just whatever. How absurd is that? So we don't matter. White people don't matter. They want to extinguish us. 
Ay, 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 ay. Apparently, according to Chinese own video app, which is notorious as perhaps the most censorious, censorious in existence, white lives don't matter. Um, yeah, when you search it, it says no results found. This phrase may be associated, with, associated, maybe associated. Like, who's deciding this? Like, it takes one person to decide that maybe it's associated with hateful behavior. How, how absurd. Um, TikTok is committed to keeping our community safe and working to prevent the spread of hate. <sighs> what a joke. Yeah, naturally, there's no chance whatsoever that the term Black Lives Matter would receive similar treatment. Anyway, next. Um, this one's interesting and... You know, all the more reason to never give your child a smartphone or um, like private access to the internet in their bedroom or something, which I've seen people's homes that have computers in the kid's bedroom. I'm like, do you want your kid to be depressed and suicidal or become trans and go ahead and give them a computer in their, in their own bedroom? Like, hello? Jeez. Instagram and Pinterest were... were Ignorantly blind, attributed to the death of a 14-year-old Molly Russell, who liked 2,100 images about depression, suicide, and self-harm before she died. Um, yeah, I believe she took her own life. She died in 2017 after hiding her demons from her family while viewing thousands of harrowing posts and videos. Um, Molly saved in like 16,300 images on her Instagram account. 2,100 of which were related to depression, self-harm, and suicide in the last six months of her life. I tell you what, the power of just like what you focus on, you create or you become. You know, my whole anorexia stint, I was obsessed with looking up uh, really thin images and fawning over them. And it can still be something I struggle with for sure, but not in, that, not in the same sense of what it was in, the, uh, in my past. But you have to be a certified moron to give your chid, chid, to give your kid a uh, smartphone. Like, um, yeah. People, you know, my sister's like, oh, my daughter's going through depression. I'm like, she's on TikTok and Instagram. What the hell did you think would happen? Like, seriously. Next. This is fun from AP News. Amazon unveils bedside device that tracks sleeping patterns. Oh, joy. Let me make this bigger. It's like this round looking speaker thing. Uh, soon enough, a bedside Amazon device might know whether you're sleeping or not. The e-commerce and tech giants said Wednesday will start selling a device later this year that can track sleeping patterns without a wristband. <laughs> the device called Halo Rise will use no contract, no contact sensors and artificial intelligence to measure a user's movement and breathing patterns, allowing the device to track sleep stages during the night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, the company Amazon said the device does not include cameras or microphones and will go for $140. The fact that they say there's no microphones or cameras tells me there's microphones and cameras. Like what, how absurd is this? Why do you got to know everything about your life in like incredible detail? Just go the F to sleep and then wake the F up. What is the deal? I just don't understand. Like, is your life so boring and you have nothing else going on that you want to know like how many hours you slept for when you woke up, blah, blah, blah. I used to actually do that. I did this test thing that it was like a strip underneath the bed that would do the same thing. I mean, not the same like this, but uh, would, would track your sleep. I don't even know how it does this. Unbelievably creepy, by the way. I wish I never did it. Um, I wasn't even a fan of it when I did it, which is whatever. Um, you know, it's just like more stuff for you to worry about, if anything, or or another reason for you to stare at your effing phone. You know, there they have like rings that can track your sleep or whatever. Why? Why do you need that? Like, I'm trying to look at the other side here. Like, if you have a medical reason for tracking your like your sleep, uh, I want to say maybe you would use this, but I don't trust anything that you have on your phone that's like tracking your personal life like this and your personal data. I don't believe apps and companies like this are not nefarious. I don't believe they're not nefarious. I had debates like this with my husband about um, technology being evil. He's like, technology is not evil. Uh, people are. And he's not wrong. And I'm like, yeah, exactly that. People are evil and people are the ones at the, at the helm of 
creating the technology. So the technology is therefore evil. So, I mean, it's, it's always going to be evil because people are, humans are fallen creatures and it's just, uh, I don't buy these things as being innocent in the slightest. Like they're, they're literally gathering data on you that you are signing up for going here or take it. Like it, as a rule of thumb now for me, um, having apps are connected to your life. Like we had a scale that would connect to your phone that tells you your, again, all these things are really, actually, I thought the scale thing was really useful because it can keep you on a healthy path. If you're trying to lose weight or gain weight. It shows you the whole chart. It connects, you know, it syncs. Actually, it never synced. I had to do it on my own. Or I had to sync it manually, which is just how technology works. It never works. Um, you know, if you have a device that then connects to your phone and puts the data on your phone on an app, get rid of it, dude. Like they're using that data and data is a hot commodity. Like they're, they're gathering more evidence on how to control humans. We, we got to wake up to this man. Like, I mean, I think I'm already effed in so many ways. Like, if, well, you're effed if you have a smartphone period. I went to the farmer's market recently and there was this food truck there that was like, save the children. They had this whole swag team and someone filming, um, they were like hounding us like here you want some swag and i'm like no pay me why do i don't wear like advertisements what the f it was so weird i'm like where's all the money going to save the children like it's you're paying all these people to like hand out swag it was just the most artificial creepy not buying it redflags.com so then i get home and there's an effing ad on my instagram for that food truck and not once did i mention that name to my husband but it doesn't matter because the phone is tracking your location and i don't know what app it is it's probably instagram um, so, you know, if you have a smartphone, unless you have a Faro cage, Faro, Faro cage, which like you put your phone in, it blocks, it truly does block all signals to and from it. You will, you are being tracked period. So fun times being sarcastic there, obviously. This is hilarious. Let me get some water. California bill, this is from people.com of all things. California bill limiting use of rap lyrics in criminal trials signed into law by Governor Gavin Newsom. The Decriminalizing Artistic Expression Act restricts the use of rap lyrics during criminal trials in the state. Um, the first state to have such a law, AB 2799, um, makes it harder for prosecutors and others to use creative expression as criminal evidence in court. Here we go again. Here we go again. I was just talking about this with like creativity being, you know, or art being satanic or just, you can pass anything as being art, as being art and it be um, like the most messed up thing ever. Uh, and this is, they're passing it as uh, you can't use rap songs in like a court of law. So a lot of rappers actually reveal like how they killed someone in their, their rap songs. They brag about it. This has been a thing in the past. So now, uh, demonic Newsome, gruesome, uh, signed a bill that says that you can't use that as uh, evidence in court. In the case of rap, that expression can include lyrics or music videos and even extends to performance art, visual art, poetry, literature, film, and other media. So basically, you could be like, yo, I killed the mofo. And they'll be like, sorry, you can't use that in the court of law because it's in the rap song. <laughs> it's so insane. Oh my gosh. It will require a court to now consider specified factors when balancing the probative value of that evidence against the substantial danger of undue prejudice. Oh my gosh. We are living in end times. My God. Uh, vomit. He like met with all these rappers or something. Thanks rappers for your work and dedication to the cause. Too short. Meek Mill. Tyga. Sick dude. Anyway, let's see. Next. There's <sighs> too much to cover, and it's already been almost an hour. Um, let's. I'm going to skip. Well, or I'm going to read it briefly. My, my screen is flashing here. Outraged mother dresses as drag queen during school board meeting to protest and demonstrate how inappropriate the outfit was for kids, which is kind of unbelievably base of this woman. So there's the uh, male dresses up as a slutty female, and she's wearing an outfit very similar what he wore to be like how is this appropriate does this make you uncomfortable it should it's not appropriate this is on the gateway pundit.com by the way um i'm gonna play some of it all right um,
whole thing was under investigation. What is right? Related several to me how this 21 year old. Does this outfit make you turn your head? Does this outfit seem appropriate for anybody here to see? Because if this makes your head turn, if this pisses you off, then it should. Because this guy walked into our school doing it. Can you adjust the work, please? They're like, excuse me, can you stay on track, please? Meow, 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 meow. Public school is trash. <clears throat> <clears throat> Take your kid out of public school. You know how you can do that? Go to public school exit. I think this is what it is. Exit.com. Maybe it's org. Yep, publicschoolexit.com. Literal resources to take your kid out of deranged, communistic public schools. Okay? So, this is the last article, I believe, possibly. Don't quote me on that. Uh, this is old, though. It's from 2020. I guess not that old, though. Hyundai. Hyundai. Hyundai? Hyundai? Buys 80% controlling stake in Boston Dynamics, maker of Spot the Robot Dog for $920 million. I had no idea that got bought out, by the way. Is this who I think it is in the background here? It looks like what's-his-face. Um, yeah, so let's just... Uh, I'm going to call this segment, Please God Make It Stop. And this one is a shout-out to my best friend, Ellen. <laughs> and this is a video from... Ju I'm sorry, June 29th, 2021. By the way, if you haven't seen the Black Mirror episode of the robot dog, go and watch it. It's predictive programming. It's grooming you. Just go watch it. Again, oops, it's we're playing. Again, make it campy, make it funny, make it cute, make it anything but what it actually is, which is horrifying. Like, <laughs> oh, just okay. I guess I'll tell you what the episode is. Spoiler alert: if you haven't seen it, just stop listening. The episode is all about this robot dog that seeks out this woman. I don't remember why, trying to kill her. And that's all it is, really. That's all I remember and all you need to remember from that episode of Black Mirror. And if you haven't watched Black Mirror, hold on tight for that one. Um, oh, okay. Okay, one more thing. One more video. Back to Hocus Pocus, so. Well, it's an interview with Kat, uh, the actress Kathy Najame. Um, she's one of the actresses, one of the witches from uh, Hocus Pocus, First one and the second one on she's on the view of all places. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, what was it like reclaiming this iconic role oh decades God, after? So you know, I think Whoopi, you can relate to this. When you've done a role before and then you do it again. Yes. And then again. And, and then again. maybe we're gonna do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It you know, it it isn't rocket science. Like those characters, I had one motivation in Hocus Pocus, and that was to eat as many children as I could <laughs> and to make Winnie, that Midler's character, like me the best. Yeah. So that was it. It's like, yeah. so Winnie, you like me, you like me, you like me. Yeah. That was it. 
so I want to have a really great actor monologue about how I got into character. It was very easy for me because growing up, Bette Midler was everything to me. Yeah. She was oh, yes. the, the idol of my life. <laughs> And I did crazy things. I ran backstage and got pulled back from guards. I did singing <laughs> telegrams dressed as bunnies. I oh. broke into all kinds of, I did crazy things. <laughs> and then to, then to hear, you know, 20 years later from Jeffrey Katzenberg, oh, we're doing this movie called Hocus Pocus. We have an offer for you. You don't hear oh that a lot. Gosh. We have an offer for you to play Bette Midler's sister. And I thought, well. Well, I mean. <laughs> so darn good. Hocus Pocus was like one of my favorite first movies. And I, I, I went and I showed it to my daughter. She never wants to go to any premiere with me. She went to the premiere dressed in orange. Wait, of this one? This one. This one. She had an out there she goes. She had an <laughs> outfit on. She had her whole situation together. She loved it so much. I loved it so much. Thank you, because we were able, as a mother and a daughter, to enjoy it together. Mm -hmm. And it's a family movie still. Yeah. It was like, it was so awesome. Isn't that funny? That it's a family movie about witches eating children. I know, I, I know, but it was really a good hearted family, like family movie. movie. That's what it felt like. <laughs> she pointed it out twice. Eating children in the course of two minutes. I'm sorry I had to suffer through that um, whole segment of the view. But it's, uh, Instagram has some certain videos that you can't uh, scroll or fast forward or rewind. <sighs> I mean, they said it right there. She said it right there. She was from Sister Act, I believe, which was an entertaining movie. Anyway, you know, I guess that's all of the uh, fuckery of this week. Um, I pray that whoever's listening to this or watching this will have uh, spiritual discernment over what Halloween is at its core. And um, we'll just have their eyes um, see, a, you know, see it for what it is in a, in a new way, in a very new way. And I think it's very wise to pray for spiritual discernment because it will give you the ability to piece out and parse out things that are you're no longer okay with or, you know, you're able to just look at things and be like, oh, that's actually satanic, like at its core, you know, because I do believe that Satan does a lot of hiding of, he, he'll use any method to, reel you in and make you laugh at something that's literally maybe occultic. I mean, there's a lot of occult stuff in our lives that we accept or not, you know, maybe don't even question like the Enneagram is a total, another device that dictates to you who you are and how you should act. And that should only come from one person, which is Jesus. He is the way, the truth and the life. Um, you know, I don't think that that's innocent. You know, if you look back on the history of the Enneagram, like do your research on that. I should probably do an episode about that. It'd be a good one. Horoscopes are not innocent. I don't think that, um, I don't know. Anyway, you get it. I, I mentioned a lot of this, but I just pray that you'll have your eyes open to uh, a lot of uh, witchcraft that is being, our, our culture is being submerged in. I went to the mall recently just to uh, get some walking in because it's so freaking hot here in Texas. And it was a way to have like AC in the middle of summer because uh, it's important to keep walking while you're pregnant. But I mean, there's so many occult witchcraft items on T-shirts or, uh, you know, stones or crystals and uh, cards and books about witchcraft in the storefront windows. It was very in my face. And I don't recall it being that out in the open and um as my neighbor and i were discussing evil and good it, there's no gray area anymore like it's in this culture in this day and age it truly is there's no gray it's it's black and white it's just evil and good and you know these these demons and demonic things are just not in hiding anymore you know with the directing story hour um so much of so much going on is just no more hiding. And, um, I think it's important to come to Christ and repent and have the truth revealed to you because the Bible is the truth and the good news. So thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to actually, I won't say that cause it's going to be in the commercial, but you guys know how to contribute, uh, PayPal. Well, I will say it, I guess paypal.me forward slash LP foster kittens, which, Oh, I gotta, 
Apparently Venmo is owned by PayPal, by the way. So what's the point of using Venmo over PayPal anyway? Um, um, or you can become a subscribe star, rational revolutionary uh, on uh, subscribestar.com forward slash distorted lens. I may cut this out because it's pretty repetitive, but maybe not. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you guys next week. God bless y'all. Hey there. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast and making it this far into it. You can support my podcast and what I do many a ways. Head to my website, which is lindsayplatotionart.com forward slash shop. There's all sorts of goodies you can buy there on my website, like the skeptic pin, the adult human female pin, the adult human male pin. There's all sorts of uh, embroidery goodies and crafty goodies that I make myself that you can support by purchasing these items. Or head to mysubscribestar.com forward slash distorted lens and become a rational revolutionary where you can support my podcast with a monthly subscription or head to paypal.me forward slash LP foster kittens where you can leave a one-time donation or multiple, however you want to do it. A free way to help out this podcast is to share this podcast on social media with your friends or leave a Apple podcast review, which just head to Apple podcasts, scroll down, leave a five star review and write up a little comment. Thank you so much for supporting my podcast in whatever way you're able to support it. Until next time, party people.